Metas shift in League of Legends. Champion picks come and go. But there's a champion that always seems to weather the storm. It isn't because he's always the strongest. It's because when it comes to showing off how mechanically skilled you are, there's no champion like him. And once you've had a taste of that freedom, well, it's not easy to give it up. And if you want to prove that you belong beside the best junglers in the world, you have to show that you have a Lee Sin. The Siva is terrifying! There goes the teleport! The oh! The king, Tion, you beauty! Gets the double kill! Nina has Guardian Angel. Maybe he plays frontline. How much can they really get? Pray through the Can I turn? Look right! Bang. Can they get the stuns coming in? And it's Duke with the big play, but the turnaround from Prey, turning it back in, the chase, the resonating strike, and the ace goes through for Peanut! And you never forget being a Lee Sin God. Just ask Insect, you bring it back eventually. Lee Sin was unleashed unto the world on April 1st, 2011. Alongside the regular Champion Spotlight trailer, Riot Games also released a funny reveal for April Fools. Lee Sin is a ranged melee, tanky DPS, assassin, mage, tank support jungler. He excels at everything. But the Blind Monk wasn't a joke. With the ability to move huge distances using both enemies and allies, he redefined what mobility in League meant. But Lee's ult, Dragon's Rage, is really what set him apart. A massive kick knocked enemy champions back, and other enemies in the path were knocked into the air. It was a playmaker's dream. Kicking a vulnerable enemy back into your team could turn the tide instantly. These two factors meant that, at least on paper, there was the potential to seriously outplay the opponent. On top of that, he has a lot of tools that are always going to work in the pro scene. The fact that you can have such a large distance that you can close onto the opponent and then kick them backwards into your team means no matter what, you're always going to have the opportunity to have a viable team fight in the game. And then his early game ganking is also strong. So he's got all those things kind of going for him. But Lee Sin didn't make an incredible splash the moment he was released. He was barely played at Season 1 Worlds and was never banned. But by Season 2, there were aggressive junglers trying to push the champion's limits. Foremost among them was Moscow 5's Diamond Prox, who became known for early game aggression, especially counter jungling. Rather than play it safe on a tanky jungler and spend his time dealing with wards, Diamond Prox brought the fight to the enemy. Looks like Invictus may be able to take their first dragon here. They have been three. Diamond Prox waiting on the wing to get in there and smite this out. Who will be able to grab their diamond? Diamond Prox grabs it out. Can they win the fight? They lost a lot of HP on the focus there. Alex is on a rampage as he drops PDT and it looks like they will be able to melt a few members here of Invictus Gaming. Diamond is still alive somehow. Cook puts on the shield. Can they get these last two with a sliver of health and an ace and the dragon steal when they lose three? And a core part of that strategy was Lee Sin's early game dueling. So basically, Arsenal said, you know, uh, 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 Diamond, Diamond, when he's playing good on Lee Sin, he's like, his Q's not uh, a skill, it's just like a head chop. He just, he will be on you and you'll be dead. At World Season 2, he was one of only two players to play Lee Sin or have it banned against him. But the champion's most iconic play would not be seen on the big stage until May 2013 at All Stars. And it was there that Insect showed off the combo that would ultimately be named after him. Could just be because he got a good early start and they're going with it, but it's definitely definitely impactful for this game. Yeah, and the fact is that we talked about who would maybe get that as Lee Sin is going to go in the middle towards Yellow Pete. He gets knocked up. Ellis is going to go into the middle, but Yellow Pete will die. Matlan's going to fall down as well. And Edward's going very, very low. Gets a pull up in the end, but they're ripping through the rest of them. Double kills coming out for Jai. And they're not done just yet. They're going to chase down Diamond. That is a nice kill. And then through the wall of Piltover Peacemaker. Not quite landing. And Diamond going to speed away. And the start of this fight was just so key when Insect comes in behind Yellow Pete, 
Q's in, Ward's back, kicks it. That is so hard to execute. Even though Europe tried to calm Wood and made really everyone sit on the Rumble Ultimate, they'd already lost their AD carry, and they burned all their CC really as a counter initiation. So the rest of Korea just chased down Europe. It's easy to dismiss this play today, because it's considered something that any competent Lee Sin player can pull off. But that moment showed everyone that even two years after the champion's release, pro players were only just scratching the surface. And it reinforced the idea that, for the mechanical jungler, Lee Sin was the ultimate test. A jungler could not be called truly elite if Lee Sin was not part of their arsenal. I always enjoy casting Lee Sin because skill expression is very evident. So if someone knows exactly what they're doing, you can really see how good a player is when they're playing Lee Sin because he's so hard, he has so much playmaking potential, and the best players seem to always be the best at him. But while Lee Sin gave junglers a new kind of freedom, League of Legends was changing. In the early years of League of Legends, support players were forced into a very vision-centric playstyle that saw them blanket the map with wards at the cost of their own item builds. This was a benefit to Lee Sin. With wards everywhere, there were options for hopping around with Safeguard. But the Season 3 patch made Vision a team responsibility, and Lee Sin players would have to figure out how to get enough wards of their own. The default option became the newly introduced Sightstone. By the end of Season 3, it was clear that Lee Sin was a dangerous weapon in the hands of an expert. He went from being nearly ignored to having a 63.5% pick ban rate at Worlds. And Bengi, the jungler for 2013's eventual world champions SK Telecom T1, dominated with him. Piglet just chunking in there as Bengi. What a move around the back here. So oh, actually gonna pull him in. Nagna here in all kinds of trouble as he lands the charm. Can they get across? Last from Bengi, lands the Q, then the kill from Faker. He would also achieve another milestone, becoming the first Lee Sin master honored with his own world skin. More than ever, Lee Sin was the ultimate example of skill expression. And as big names put on outstanding shows with the champion, up-and-coming talent took notice. And then timed this dive here very effectively. Might not be over yet, Pyro. Yeah, we had that flash, and in comes Gankos now. Lulex is the one who gets hooked. They throw in the sapling. Flash away from Lulex. Going for him. Yankos wants to finish him off. He's going low, but he gets the kill. Flashes, takes the lantern, the juke. Still alive. Shock blast intercepted by Vander. Steve and Nice They're play. Hanging out. Good play. Here comes Ackerman, though. The 4v5 from LMQ. Will it be good enough for Silly? Very low. The Q lands from Lee Sin. They don't chase down. He does oh! go in. Big damage. Kicks him back in the shutdown. No. Now, no one has got nowhere to go. Three kills picked up. Ackerman goes in for this fight, but is it going to be enough? Oh, oh, my. Dandy getting missed. behind. Oh, I think Bang's in trouble. There's a the kick. They kick him in. Oh, the death sentence. Spada nearly comes in. There's some the box. And MVP Ozone is going to absolutely slaughter Xenix last. Goodbye, Bang. Lee Sin's rise meant that tons of players were eager to try their own hand at the champion. Casual players, undaunted by the complexity and perhaps inspired by the pros, began to lock in the blind monk, even if their team would rather they didn't. And those players' inability to resist hitting Q a second time earned their play a name, Lee Syndrome. Yeah, we know, I, I hit the Q, the Q must be going in on, okay? The, the flow chart for my logic is gonna be, is enemy in range? If yes, press Q, if not, don't press Q. Did enemy get hit? Yes, press Q again, no. Revert back to phase one of the flow chart. Very simple, very easy to remember. While Lee Sin hadn't changed a lot from release, the jungle itself had. In late 2015, another huge shift would help the champion's popularity the revamp of jungle items that included Tracker's Knife. A jungle-specific item that also gave wards was maybe the biggest buff that Lee Sin had received since his release. But with Tracker's Knife in the game, and junglers hungry to prove their mechanical excellence, it was a golden age for Lee Sin. At Worlds 2016, he was tied for highest jungle presence with Olaf, and for good reason. 
Hero of Smith running out of health and gets shut down as well. But Prey, does he find the targets? Peanut has Guardian Angel. Maybe he plays frontline. How much can they really get? Prey turns oh, the back. Turn. Turn. Look Prey. Bang. Looks for it all. He's got one. What else can he get? It's going to be Blake in his sights. He's coming back. Baker's low. How much more can they get? The stun's coming in. And it's Duke with the big play. But the turn around from Prey. Turning it back in. The chase. The resonating strike. And the ace goes through for Peanut. And now, a new generation of junglers, who had watched players innovate in the game's early days, wanted to prove that they had the mechanics to compete. One such jungler was Broxa, who spent 2016 trying to make his way into the EU LCS. Until that comes back up, you have to be so much more safe with your realm walk. You can't afford to get yourself in a bad spot. Speaking of bad spots, Ghost is going to be used. Brox just Brox staying up. onto him though. There's the insect coming on through, and that is a kill for Niski. Fnatic pick up their hatch. Well, I've always been really, really attracted by really good early game champions, really good skirmishers with, um, like that really depend a lot on having really good mechanics. Um, and in the first place, I was an Elise one trick, and then at one point, I was like, holy, like, Lee looks so fun, I have to learn this champion, and then ever since then, I think that was like four years ago, I've just been loving Lee, you have so much uh, potential to make big plays, he's just a really good skirmisher, and he's pretty much everything I like as a jungler, and I just really love this champion. By spring 2017, Brox's flashy Lee Sin play was turning heads in the EU LCS. The champion had been out for five years, and during that time, had seen a number of tweaks. But a shift in the jungle meta ended up nerfing Lee Sin harder than any balance change would have. By Worlds 2017, the infamous Ardent Sensor meta was in full force. And for the jungle, that meant prioritizing scaling champions like Sejuani and Jarvan. But will they play AD carry? Protect him, harden the sensor, <laughs> can on a tank. I love the fact that they're doing what G2 did and saying, uh -huh. let's ban their Janna first of all, and maybe even the Lula, L Lula, Lulu, Lula, to get rid of some of these art sensor supports. If Lee Sin mains were hoping for a change that would make the champion more viable in 2018, they ended up disappointed. Because the core of modern Lee Sin builds, Tracker's Knife, was removed in patch 8.4. The idea wasn't to target Lee Sin. It was to reduce vision generally in the hopes of making the game less predictable. But since Sightstone had also been removed, it left Lee Sin in a terrible place. Now, with no cheap access to wards, it seemed like the art of playing Lee Sin was on the verge of extinction. In 2018, in every major region, Lee Sin was barely played before Worlds, but it was clear that the game's best hadn't forgotten that he existed. I'm fascinated as to where RNG go with this because you definitely don't want to pick the Trundle. Olaf could be an option, but will he go oh. for a potential staple pick of his? And the he will. Sin. This is what we wanted him to bring back yesterday. And you never forget being a Lee Sin god. Just ask Insect, you bring it back eventually. It's gonna be great to see. And at Worlds 2018, as Fnatic went deep into the tournament, Broxa reminded everyone that Lee Sin was more than just another champion. He was a secret discipline, one that Broxa nurtured even after Tracker's Knife was gone, and he unleashed it on the biggest stage in League of Legends. All the way into the tower. Man. Oh, that's oh, all it is! Get rid of support! He didn't follow it through! Here comes oh, Brox! Oh. First blood for Brox's Lee Sin! Now he's gonna get away. Takes a hammer to the face from Manda, continue to run it. Looking at the minimap, Hillisek is coming up. There's the Winter Spike, and is coming from the side. A cosmic binding, his body block, oh, got the shield, and then everything survives! Brox gets out alive! Now Hillisek the target. Ryu teleported him for the fight. I am speechless at how Fnatic did that. Well, they're gonna try for another one though, and this one, Body Slam stops the queue. Here comes Bowen as well. 2v1, Proxa may have been up more than he can chew. The health bar's running down. The kick, the Q, the second! Get out. That was gorgeous! And there's another one coming as Jackie Love also falls. Fnatic win the skirmish. And Proxa is an absolute monster for Fnatic this game. Even though they ultimately lost to IG, Fnatic were the first Western team to reach Grand Finals at Worlds since Season 1, and Brox's ability to play Lee Sin was a big part of that. 
It was a reminder that even when the blind monk seemed overshadowed, he was always waiting to unleash the dragon. Yeah, so trying to figure out why Lee Sin always remains viable, one of the most simple things about it is almost every jungler who's made it to pro has put in a ton of games on Lee Sin because he's so fun and he has so much skill expression. So if you're a good player, you probably like playing Lee Sin and you put a bunch of games into him so you think you can make him work. In 2011, Lee Sin's mobility was nearly unthinkable. It gave junglers the most freedom they'd ever had to outplay opponents and show their mechanical prowess. But after years of power creep, many newer champions in League have incredible mobility. Despite that, Lee Sin is still around. And it's because junglers today still know that he's the ultimate test of their ability. Junglers like SOFM have stayed true to the Blind Monk and have even brought new build ideas to the table. Takes to the skies to dodge the arrow, but here's SOFM. He's got the flash, he's got himself a chilling smite, but doesn't quite land it. Clear up is the first oh, target, oh. tries to deliver him through. Even Flandre gets in on the action, and SOFM with a ward hop smite finally locks it down. Seven to one for Snake. King SOFM. The 2019 World Champion, Tian was featured as Lee Sin in the 2020 World's music video, a nod to his own incredible performances with the champion. The Siva is terrifying! There goes the teleport! The teleport! Oh! The king! Tian! You beauty! Gets the double kill! And when the chips were down in the World's 2020 quarterfinals, Karsa equipped Tian's FPX Lee Sin skin and turned the tide for his team. Here comes Costa as well as Jackie Love from the mid lane. What, what can, can Jackie, Jackie Love do? do? With a double box, he's jumping on a Whippo. He's got the damage done. Whippo gets the knock up. Hillison follows up. Can't find it though. Defensive flash away. Jackie Love continues to Whoa! chase. Oh, leap. The resonating strike from Corsa. Corsa! Self made packing. And Hillison escapes with his life. Flash forward from Reckless. Cannot find the kill. Jackie Love stays alive. The shielding from Karma does it. But Fnatic get out. And the cycle continues. Masters inspire new students. While we may never again see a meta dominated by the champion, you can bet that a new generation of junglers will keep their pocket lease in well honed. And whether you think they're gods, Uh, Gilius Gilius, king of Lee Sin, ascend to godhood and grant me this win. Or Lee Sinners. I don't, I'm just so, their comp looks so confusing, the evil geniuses. Yeah, it's just so it's random. All over the place. Right, it is. It there's is. no like ah! with one another. Oh, what was that? Even a blind monk can see that Lee Sin isn't going anywhere. Failure has not stopped me before. It will not now.